Yeah, I'm just showing uh, how easy it is to update the ECOS and connect to your computer, etc. Which I'm going to do now. I think I've uh, shown a video in the past of how to do this, but anyway, I'm going to show another video. Uh, you've got to have your network cable plugged in the back of the ECOS. And then so there's my routers. Uh, one's a Virgin Media Super Hub router, which is pretty easy to uh, get up and running and configure. Um, it's just that's a cable from the ECOS that plugs in on one of the ports. That cable goes to the computer here, which is a tower computer, which is really old fashioned, but it's been updated loads of times over the years. And this router here is just for the ECOS, which I use on its own as a standalone item with the ECOS to use with uh, iPad, iPod, iPhone, etc. Uh, that way you have a much stable connection and nothing else interferes with it if you have a standalone router and that's what I do recommend. Yeah, so when you're ready to connect to your computer, just to make sure everything's fine, press banner, press IP icon and make sure this box is ticked, which it says hey, uh, sorry, DHCP server. Tick that box, it will automatically configure itself if it's plugged into a, a decent router or if you want to do it manually. You can do and you can change the host name that shows up on your computer as well to whatever you want. Uh, that's it, all you do. Uh, make sure numbers are right if you know what they are. Uh, once you do that, you press tick and it will automatically uh, log on to the router then. It should be pretty straightforward. Yeah, so I'm on the ESU website now and basically you've got to uh, register your ECOS if it's a new one with a serial number. Doesn't matter if it's a second hand one, all you've got to do is just re register it with a serial number and they just double check if everything's fine and it's not a stolen unit or anything like that because that's they also check up for that as well. Um, and basically, the, you just get access to the site after about 24 48 hours, depending. Sometimes it, it can take a while. Mine did, it took about two days for it to come back to me. I think it was a weekend or something. Uh, but once you get uh, your account and everything's set up, you get full access for all the software downloads and on many other areas as well on the site. Uh, and then all you do then is basically just go to software and select ECOS firmware and there's all the updates. 3.70 is the one I want because I'm on 3.61 I think or 3.6. So it's a while since I've updated mine. So now I shall do that. Just another note, when you do download the actual file it is compressed. So you've got to unzip it or decompress it, uh, put it to whatever drive you want and then install it when it's uh, decompressed or unzipped as they call it. Um, or you can just do a run. You can run the file from when you download it on your computer and it should automatically do that. Yeah, and the next stage obviously is to go and see a browser, uh, internet browser, punch in the, your IP address. Uh, that was shown on the ECOS, um, your router, etc. And then when you press return, uh, you, you get, you, you're connected then to your ECOS, which I am now. Just connect it up, select what language you want, which is uh, obviously English. Yeah, so basically when you're ready to do the upload, you just press firmware update, uh, choose file from wherever the file is, mine's on my USB drive, um, uh, pen drive, which is there. Select the file which I've done and press send. When you press send, and it doesn't look like it's doing anything at all, just leave it because it's setting itself up. It does take a while to set itself up and do the update. Uh, so don't mess around or switch, any, switch anything off or shut anything down because at the moment it doesn't look like it's doing anything but it is, it just takes a while. And of course on the ECOS as you can see now, install an update, please wait. And this can take a while. Uh, it looks like nothing whatsoever is going on, but I've, you know it, it does take a while to uh, to uh, initiate and complete this uh, sequence. So you just have to wait and be patient. 
yeah, another good idea is to store your configuration if you have spent a lot of time doing track plans and all the rest of it. So, I, you know, I do it on a fairly regular basis. That means if anything goes wrong, if your ECOS blows up, gets stolen, whatever, you can restore it from your memory stick or wherever the file is, a save file, with these configurations, local list. List of all accessories and routes, system configuration, user defined images. So that's a really good thing to do. Yeah, and another feature is show display in browser, bottom left hand bar. That'll bring up um, the ECOS display onto your PC, like that. Let's make that bigger, there we go. It shows all what's going on and that updates every four seconds I think it is, I'm not sure, can't remember. So if I go to my track plan, which I've just pressed on now, that will update in four seconds time and just gives you an idea of what's going on, just for demonstration purposes really. Well not a lot of people know it's got that feature. So that's it, update complete, thanks for watching.